So welcome to some fun physics. What I thought we'd do today is set you a little problem and see if you can uh, work out what's going to happen with um, this toy of mine. So uh, what you need for this one is a perch. So there's the perch. And you need a bird that's going to uh, fly onto the perch and uh, land on it. Now you notice this bird is uh, quite spread out. It's got large wings, uh, beak at the front and tail at the back. And um, the first thing I thought we'd think about is what happens if we put it on the perch. And it's somewhat counterintuitive. If I just rest it on there, it seems to balance perfectly. It's, uh, there's no magnetism or anything here. The proof is I can stick it on my finger and get exactly the same effect. Um, so I thought, I wonder what you think might happen if we um, rotate it and give it a push. So I'll put it back on the perch. And we'll give the tail a push. A little bit of friction there, but it'll go around quite nicely. So um, what do you think is going to happen if I push the tail downwards? Uh, is it going to collapse off um, or is it going to stay on the perch or is it going to just, just drop off? So we'll let go of the tail. I've pushed it down quite hard and let go. Oscillates for a short time and then rebalances. So um, first thing is what's going on here? Well, of course, if you look at the bird from this sort of angle, um, you've got large heavy wings hanging out from one side and you've got the tail hanging out from the other side and they create equal and opposite moments. Um, but the bit my students um, need to get, and they are getting it now, is the fact that forget the shape of the bird, the shape is irrelevant. What's important is that its centre of mass or some say uh, centre of gravity is directly above the beak. So think of this thing as just a point directly above the beak and if you think of the beak as just being the point where you can imagine all the forces being concentrated then you can forget the tail and you can forget the wings because all you're doing is just sitting the mass on that bit there and the force acts directly down through it um, but it wasn't that I wanted to show you um, the bit I wanted to think about was what if I pick up the uh, perch that it's on and bring it upwards and then bring it downwards remember we've got a heavy tail here but hang on, we've got some wings overhanging as well. So what I'm going to do is pick it up and move it upwards. Move it downwards. And in fact, the wings and the tail don't tilt at all. I'm not sure if that's what you expected. Uh, but of course, think of the mass, or should we say its weight, the force being concentrated over the beak. So um, you don't need to worry about the shape of the tail or the uh, shape of the wings. It will always follow the perch. Um, there are a couple of exceptions when you lift it, or at least when you drop it vertically if I drop it with an acceleration rate greater than that um, that it would normally fall freely then I will move the perch from underneath it and it will fall off but um, it's quite an unusual thing of course moving it sideways is slightly different uh, I'm lucky that it stays there but if I move it too quickly um, there won't be enough friction and the perch will move and the bird will stay where it is and it'll fall off but um, the bit I wanted you to think about today was the fact that when we rise it and lower it and raise it and lower it doesn't make any difference because the weight appears to be acting on the beak. It's a bit of fun that one and um, you may have seen versions of this with um, other shapes but I particularly like this one and um, it's one my classes always enjoy playing with. So I hope you enjoyed that one. I'll do some more experiments soon.